giving warning to them. In Islam, salvation is obtained through searching out and surrendering to God. So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, as a Muslim, being a God-centered religion, it is very important for us that we worship the one and the only Creator. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you, Brother Shakrit, for elaborating the concept of God according to the Quran. And um, for your information, the sequence of the speakers has been agreed among us in such a way that um, every speaker uh, has no problem uh, actually with. Um, who is going to speak first and who is going to speak last in this uh, opportunity and uh, for all of you uh, you will have the opportunity to ask question after all speakers have uh, presented the case you may say the, the case okay and um, after the question and answer session Every speaker will also have the opportunity to run out the speech. So, our second speaker, I would like to invite Dr. William Lau uh, to present on the concept of God according to the Christian Hello. scripture. Can you hear me? A very good evening, Director Dato. Our moderator, my learned speakers, ladies and gentlemen. How are you this evening? Well, I'm here to give you a 20-minute talk on the concept of God from the Christian perspective. Now, since time immemorial, the term God has been debated by people of from all walks of life. What is God? But of course, in the course of time, Various people have come out with their own concept of what God is like. Now you find that today we have so many religions. We have uh, Islam, we have Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism and so forth. And each religion has a different concept of God. Now from the perspective of the Christian faith. God, of course, we just borrowed from Judaism. The God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and He is uh, the God, a jealous God, a God who created the heaven and earth. And He is also uncreated. And so much so that he is so powerful we always call him the almighty God but who is this mighty God he must have a name and our Moses so when he asked God who shall I tell the Israelites your name is he said I am who I am tell the Israelites my name is I am and I am sent you to see you and his name is I am and the Jews so what they do is because I am in Hebrew it sounds like YHWH so they use the four letters YHWH and they don't actually pronounce it but human beings as such they want the easy way so they added the vowel and call him Yahweh Yehovah and so forth but that is not the true name of God and it is the human coining of that word so his name is I am now God as you all know is spiritual in nature he exists 
everywhere. And that is only possible if he is in existence in spirit. So when he created the people, man, he breathed his breath into the first creation, Adam. And therefore we have the spirit of God in each and every one of us. And actually, according to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 6, verse 16, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of God. That's why we are so different from the animals. Everyone has this quality of God. Next. So now, this almighty God has certain corollaries which I would like to highlight. Because He is so almighty, therefore, the first thing is, He is all-powerful, omnipotent. And the next word is omniscient. He, he is a knows all. And omnipresent. He is everywhere. And these three O, O cube, we call it, describe actually the almightiness of God. Then the next thing is, He is the creator of humankind and the universe, all the planets, all the living things, and non living things on earth and other planets. And he created it. And if you were to look and read the Genesis, you would get the whole story of the creation. Now, the next important point is he is imminent. God is imminent and transcendental. Now, these two words have great significance. So when you say that God is imminent, it means that it is indwelling. He is indwelling in all living things and in all and in animate things. Now, therefore, actually I'm still doing research in this imminence of God today. So I hope that when I meet you next, I'll be able to deliver a paper on you on the imminence of God. And it is so important to understand God because He is imminent, He dwells in the people, He dwells in animals, He dwells in even in inanimate things. Like for instance, a stone consists of molecules and atoms. But within the atom, there is life. Now the question is, who actually gives life to this atom? So there is still a lot of research to be done. The imminence. Now, transcendence means God is not proscribed. His movement is not proscribed. He is timeless. He is not constrained by space and time. Infinite. That is God. Next. So, when we talk about this power of God, we must also talk about the personal side of God. Now, if you were to look through the various scriptures, you find that God has been looking after us since the day of creation. Didn't He? Every time we stray from our path, He would bring us back to the right path. So when we are suffering, He will send His prophets to come and give consolence to the people, comfort to the people. When He saw that the Jews were being enslaved in Egypt, so he sent Moses to liberate the people, his people from Egypt, and at the same time guided them to the land of milk and honey in Canaan. Right? So now, this personal God is a very important God because, because he is a personal God, he loves us, he cares for us. He can actually see, he feels, he can touch. So that is also another part of the personal God that we are talking about. Next, he is divine, merciful, benevolent, compassionate.